Hello, uh, something's a little different for you tonight. Uh, I've got a pre-recorded interview. It's a follow-on from my interview with Angel, who was a friend of Harrigan and Doyle. Uh, it was actually uh, Reagan Littler, Billy Littler's daughter, who uh, found my channel and uh, sent Angel to me for that interview. And uh, they introduced another character called Billy Littler, uh, who was another Canadian we hadn't previously heard of. Uh, so tonight I'm finally going to interview Reagan Littler about her dad, Billy Littler. Right, so we're recording now. Right, so this is uh, Rogan Littler, the daughter of Billy Littler, and I was just going to let you talk, basically, let you explain who Billy Littler is and how he relates to Billy Doyle and the uh, Canadians. Okay, yeah. okay so um, Billy Littler is my father. Uh, he married my mom in 1981 when she was pregnant with me, but she was in a relationship with my dad starting... She met him in 1969. She was a runaway and she went to uh, Rochdale, Toronto, which is an experimental uh, university. Uh, it ended up being a hippie commune. Uh, every floor had an ashram and my dad was head of security there. So he was hired. There's bikers originally doing all of the security uh, and they're vagabonds. My dad was close with all of them. Um, so they put him in the head security spot. So he was controlling all of the drugs that came in and out of Rochdale, put him in a really good um, in a position to do that. Um, and basically it was the Toronto hub for um, all the drug, all drugs. Uh, it was, a, you know, uh, 1960s when he was, it was just a hot spot to go and everybody was flooding to Rochdale College, all the hippie runaways tried to get in there and it ended up being a really big problem with overcrowding. Um, yeah. So um, my dad would, uh, and my mom said he was smart about it. He never wrote his name down. He never signed any documents at the front desk. Uh, there are lots of uh, videos out there about Rochdale and you can see uh, him uh, in his kind of routine of who can come in and who can come out. You would test them and say, who are you here to see? Uh, what floor are they on? And, and and he would kind of feed them false information. He would know everybody in every room and see if they were actually supposed to be in the building or not, if they were expected. And if not, they just out and out. And he had the big the dogs, as you can see in the photo there. So he he trained and bred uh, yeah, German yeah, shepherds yeah, and, the yeah. and uh, Bouviers. Those were his kind of his three big uh, breeds that he liked to work with. And everybody yeah, in, in your middle. Dogs. Sorry? He trained guard, he trained yeah. guard dogs. For the, guard for the trained, yeah, and he continued uh, working and uh, doing that uh, with the help of uh, his photographer friend uh, was able to um, make it, uh, make the documents look legal. So he was able to continue to do that in uh, Vancouver for a while, like after he left Las Vegas. It was about have been in the 90s around that time. And that's when my half brother, who Angel was speaking of, was living with him. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of brings that around to the other podcast in the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he and he and Billy Doyle were business partners then in '68 yeah. as well. Yeah. Billy Doyle so Billy and Doyle, like, you see, this is the, my parents' uh, wedding certificate. <laughs> We have Sorry. pictures of this in my Facebook group. Yeah. Make them yeah. Yeah. They're just for if anybody's skeptical. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, Billy Doyle was the best man at my parents' wedding. They were, he was brought up. Uh, so picture, the picture this, he yeah. been in, yeah. And then uh, the other one is going to be, or I had to cover his face just for the wishes of the families. Um, and that's yeah. Billy and then the wedding party. There. So I apologize yeah. that I can't share the photos. I'm, yeah, it's a, probably a matter of safety for the man that took them, and he's a. We'll, we'll see how 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 what happens over time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, And you've got the Dali painting as well, since you just shown the wedding mm -hmm. album. Yeah. Oh, the painting. Yeah. This is a painting. So this, that's been we have to have the six. We have six pieces of artwork that Doyle gave to my parents as wedding presents. So this one, probably the most famous series, is Salvador Dali's Space Elephant. And I'll just turn it around here. Oh, 
is a heavy one. And there is, can you see that? Or am I backwards again? There we go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And we do have photographs of this so you can see it clearly yeah. clear the available. It has, yeah. So, so, yeah, I've been in, yeah. So, I, and then I re check a research. Yes, Billy Doyle was an art collector or thief. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of both. But they had to, like, just get rid of large amounts of money, didn't they, guys, that made I, huge I, amounts of money? I would imagine so it's yeah. like a way of laundering, right? Putting your money, investing yeah. it in, into something physical. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. like um, yeah, I spend a lot of time around my parents' acquaintances uh, from Rochdale every every weekend, basically when I was a, a child. Um, and Billy Doyle's name was a constant topic. Uh, nobody ever really said anything. I don't remember him being air like a bad guy to me like they he, like my dad and billy were kind of oh, i didn't know my dad growing up either he left when i was three um because he, he had to uh he was told that he couldn't you know kind of be couldn't be part of this of society anymore for you know for mm -hmm. just crimes that he had committed and you know don't come back to america jack is pretty much what they told him um yeah. but uh, uh um uh whatever we want to say now about billy and um so yeah it was yeah. like my research finding out about my dad that i was looking for um with which i came across billy's name i just started googling my dad's name every so often to find out more about him because the stories i was hearing were quite um, outlandish uh like yeah. unbelievable it didn't really make sense to me as far as how could he have been in jail in 19 or 1970 but yeah. then he was working security and he was in the military in germany like it just it was just like something's not right here yeah. uh, so i'm trying to you know yeah. doing all this every couple of years or every month getting on the google because people are putting on new content as the internet's getting bigger and yeah. the piece just led me to um my dad having some of the same behaviors as manson um as far as the way that my mother and uh angel uh, were treated yeah. and well, just been, yeah, actually just doyle's cool. name so when it's doyle when i saw doyle attached to that it just locked it in <laughs> like okay yeah. i'm i'm on track but here there's like a I, subject I, that's coming up yeah. there's a subject that's coming up a lot recently a method of human trafficking called the love mm -hmm. boy method and they call it go pimps yeah so my so mom you like, fall in love with them and make you think that you they're your girl you're their girlfriend my mom whatever, and has, out, actually, they just want to traffic you yeah and charles yeah. manson did that and it looks like your my, dad my mom has absolute yeah. stockholm syndrome uh and i don't know if your viewers if you look back a little bit nancy had posted a meme of fat guys and uh yeah, yeah, women and uh, they're, they're a coke yeah, dealer. Like, was coke dealer. Yeah. Why is she yeah. with him? Like a really hot yeah. woman with a weird. My mom fat. was the girl that uh, everybody wanted, you know, like everybody. And my dad was not, if you know, he didn't have the power just as far as stature, he wouldn't, yeah. it just doesn't line up. <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah, my mom, uh, when I was little, when I, when she left him when I was three, uh, we were staying in a safe house before that, and uh, she found a house for me and my brother. And uh, she said, you know, if he ever comes, like he's bad, like telling me about all, like how, you know, he's a bad man, he's an evil man. Don't, don't talk to him if he calls. Like, you know, yeah. she showed, you know, kept pictures around, and then uh, eventually, like, you know, within, I don't even, I don't know when her opinion changed. But at yeah, some point, yeah. she said, you know, I wish I could have, we could have stayed together, and I wish she could have been our protector, but uh, if he'd been caught, he would have gone away forever. So, yeah, that's me and me and my brother and my mom and my dad. So you went from living in a safe house yeah. to letting him visit you? And, yeah. No. He, well, I don't know. My mom probably, she probably at first wanted him to be a part of our lives i do have one vivid memory of him being there only because uh there's a really shoddy patchwork in the ceiling where he punched the roof that i had to look at for 
the rest of my life when I was in that house. Uh, but I do remember the time I realized I being very abusive. Yeah, being very brutally abusive. So there's strong, some strong Stockholm syndrome yeah. going on there, for sure. Yeah. Because me, my dad had all the beautiful girls. And uh, I, from what I understand, it, like between him and Doyle, uh, this other fellow, a couple other fellow uh, guys the, along the way, they all operated the same way. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think like like we had discussed and it's discussed out there. They send them in teams too, like you know, kind of uh, Doyle and Pick and or uh, sorry, uh, Harrigan. Yeah, Harrigan and, and Doyle. Uh, and yeah. Pick Doyle and and Billy yeah. Doyle work together quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. I and I know that my dad had a like it. Um, that he was a huge uh, marijuana, he smuggled a lot of marijuana. That was kind of his big, big claim to fame. Uh, she, my mom was a drug mule for them, so she would come in with the false bottoms and things like that. Uh, one of the gentlemen that I met uh, that was involved in all of this, who I, 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 I know that he wants to tell me more, but he's kind of in a position where he can't so... Yeah, they know that he loves to brag because he was very happy to show me his false bottoms <laughs> equipment, his camera, all of his empty camera lenses and things like that. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's unfortunate so that I'm not being able to get the answers that I want. So I thank you, Nancy, for having this um, vehicle for me. Hopefully you get any information, additional information, if anybody knows my dad passed away in uh, 20, 2004. You know, and I, there was no internet like back then. So it's, I don't, my, my mom can't talk about it because she goes, and I just, I just want to say for anyone listening as well who's worried, um, I've actually spoke to like people, you know, that work in law enforcement about this situation basically. And the Manson case is closed. It would cost money to reopen it. So unless you're going to come forward with real heavy evidence like the murder weapon or something like that. They're not going to reopen this case, right? So if anyone just wants to say their truth and uh, just uh, let people decide whether they're telling the truth or not, right, they can say mm -hmm. it and the, the FBI aren't going to come and fucking nick you. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like that. The the, the case mm -hmm. is closed. So unless you've got real serious evidence, they're not going to come and get you. You can yeah. tell us things that happen, you know. Please. Yeah. Please. Uh, like I know yeah. my dad, like, like I said, it, the reason that I, you know, kind of stumbled upon this is because he oper I was watching Manson uh, uh, podcast and, and he just he, he operated the exact yeah. same way with the jail time and then being released. So, so there's a yeah. lot more to this that I, I would like to, to know. Well, they possibly and, like, recruit criminals, don't they, to use as like mercenaries? Exactly, and my mom was uh, on the street. Yeah, my mom was a homeless youth drug addict, and yeah. he pimped her off. And you know, like Fer Ferguson, uh, he's passed away, uh, but he was who my mom was originally dating. He was another one at Rochdale. He was part of their little inner group of and you know, Rochdale College. Which is, is yeah, it's yeah. So yeah. these are a couple. These are like the original. These would two on Amazon would be the two top titles that come up. So I started. This is where my research kind of started. Um, you know, there's talk of people uh, falling off of balconies because of acid overdoses, which I don't know. I don't think I need to go much into that. Anybody who's watching has probably heard that as you know, yeah. Some, yeah, I can link that. <laughs> Diane yeah. Linklet, isn't there? Those people say uh, that her so-called suicide wasn't suicide. Mm -hmm. And the creator, one of the of, of LSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, also a creepy called Devin Wilson, uh, mm -hmm. who was associated with Hendrix, and uh, his, well, no yeah. one, his Hendrix death. actually spent time at Rochdale. My dad spent some time with Hendrix at Rochdale. Yeah. There's a lot of them came through rock because it's probably all the Canadians, obviously, that were down in uh, Laurel Canyon had gone, you know, hung around the Rochdale scene. My, my yeah. mom's, they're, my, they're name droppers, my mom, for sure. 
<laughs> she used to tell me stories and she I don't think she realized that I would, you know, uh, absorb this information and, you know, put it together. Yeah, so that's my mom and my dad when so he would explain who this guy so, is, yeah, because people want to know. This who guy, is. I I'm not really sure of the name. I don't wanna I know that people do know his names. I think Don something, I wanna say. Um, but there's that and there's yeah. a lot of documentation with my the Black Panthers were heavily involved in Rochdale too, right. which uh was was present in the CLO drive and the vagabonds, the bikers, like uh yeah, he was affiliated with a lot of uh people that you, this is what I mean, like I'm hearing and I'm seeing in these books that he's affiliated with all of these people. And he told me yeah. the Mama Cass story when I was about 15 about the, the spaghetti sauce, the best spaghetti yeah. sauce you've ever yeah. made, Canada, which is in like line that. with the Angel's yeah. story. And I hadn't met, like, that, that. those came separate. You know, and Angel said he might have borrowed that story yeah. from me. I've never seen your dad cook a day in his life. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's just, and I, and I had asked my mom, I said, it's just like, about the, that story. She said, you, your dad never met Mom, Mama Cass. I don't know what you're talking about. And then, it's, yeah. you know, there's you know, keep it uh, compartmentalized, you know, like Angel was yeah. there to, and this was after my parents had separated it, I think, or, yeah. So yeah. it's just not, um, not appropriate for her to know, I don't think. Or she just doesn't remember. Uh, it's like I've, I've voiced to you before in our in our conversation, uh, and it's the same with Angel. And I apologize, Angel. I know you are going to be listening to this. Uh, the The memories are hazy. You know, they're both yeah. older women now, and sometimes it's hard to uh, uh, get us. Yeah. You know, a streamlined answer. Mama Cass turned up in Canada because uh, if it was 69, then she was trying to escape being questioned by the police because she was being questioned a lot over Pick Dawson. Mm. But, uh, also, if it was 1970, she was trying to avoid being called to the trial because Charles Manson was threatening to call all the mamas and papas as defense mm -hmm. witnesses. Yeah, she but isn't that funny out. that she ends up with my, uh, you know, yeah. with Billy Gay yeah, business partner in the middle of the country? Year. Angel Sorry? doesn't remember the year. If there's if there's anyone out there who remembers the year that I, that Mama Cass was there, because Angel doesn't remember the year, she can't um, remember the exact year. I will I ask my it. brother because she yeah, would have said, it. yeah, because um, he's had he knew you know he had more obviously spent more time with his mom. He didn't wasn't raised by her, but uh, she she would have been a lot clearer, like. She, telling the stories back then when they were not as old. Yeah. Yeah, she's got some she's got some memory yeah, problems. So if I was to know, it, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I actually when mm -hmm. was in Canada. Yeah. Like I would have to just like she said they lived it would have been when my dad had the security company. Because she yeah. was saying he was a little, just outside of British Columbia, and after that he went and lived up north on the Sunshine Coast, it, deep in the bush, and he was growing pot out there and, and sending it back to Toronto, and that was how he was supporting himself. I remember when I was about 15, I opened up a VCR, a remote control for the VCR that came from, uh, I was on, he did, would never mark his name, like the return address, and Go put the batteries in. It's packed with pot. <laughs> my mom, the whole whole thing was packed with pot for my dad. Uh, I was the child support. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when he looked like this around this time, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So he de he yeah he aged very rapidly. I was twenty nineteen in this photo. Yeah. He died when he was 62. So he died only a few years after this. I was 19, so that was 2000. Yeah, he died within four years of this photo. But he was out in the bush and he didn't, he wasn't able to get the medical care that he needed. Uh, you know, he wasn't able, he wasn't able to have basically an identity. 
Uh, just out living a reclusive lifestyle so he can't find the time he could finally get to a doctor it was heart disease uh diabetes you know he ended up uh just from his angiogram uh and i i was with him in his fight like i was there i found out he was sick and i wanted to go get to know him just you know i was i knew that he was notoriously um just you know, there wasn't there wasn't good stuff there. There was, but I, you know, I didn't want to go with him. I didn't want him to pass away with me thinking just what my opinions were based on other stories. Yeah. Uh, so and I went and so I, I didn't I didn't, didn't like him. Hmm. Why so were you I mean, told he went into hiding? As well? Why were you told he went into he hiding? Was, as well? He was uh, he training was mercenaries for the Bay of Pig incident. For the CIA. So he handed you that during the lunch. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I always held on to that because I, 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 at that time, again, there was like internet, like Google was fresh. And, and there just wasn't a lot about it. Like, I don't think a, a lot of the information was released about uh, Canadians involved with um, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for knowing that. <laughs> it's okay. I need to know about that. Yeah. yeah. So, that, yeah, that was, that was my first little uh, breadcrumb. Yeah. I, know, I still have that. So, yeah, yeah, it's he hard was... to believe. Like, I, at first, I thought that he was part of the um, uh, invasion, but it turns out he was he was training. Uh, yes. People, but I know that he was a hand, like he was a, for lack of a better word, a handler of uh, my mom and other women, and yeah. uh, who knows what he was training them. Hmm. And, and this is why you couldn't come back to the U.S. You told me he said he he was told not to come back to the U.S. or he go to yeah, he can he told us that he would be his life in Guantanamo Bay. That was the right. deal. You know, so you like like one of your uh one of your fans, one of your page members, I said he said he'd come up, he's apparently it looks like he was very smart and he just never surfaced. And he was right, and I said, Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like he did, and that's what killed him eventually. Yeah. But he was unable to, you know, take care of himself, his hygiene problems. Yeah. And it was horrifying for me to meet when I met him in Toronto for the first time. I was with my brother, my full brother. And we went to the, we were in Toronto subway. And we were pretty familiar. Like my mom's brought us to Toronto every weekend. And that's where I would hear a lot of the Doyle stories and my dad's stories growing up. Like everybody talking, you know, telling their tales. Uh, but I, I, I was looking at all homeless people in the, in the sky crane in Toronto. I said, oh, look at that one. And he looked at us, Steve, Reagan. I was just, I, I just was like, this can't be my dad. Like, he'd been built up to me as like this god. Like, this, you know, like any of the photos I'd seen of him were with him with his dogs and like, yeah. you know, he was the man. Yeah. And then this is what I was presented with. Like, it just, yeah. it was so sad, so sad. Yeah. But this no, doesn't really want to be he couldn't get medical care basically by the same thing. Well, yeah. yeah, and they said you know, when your mom left him, that was the day he died. That's what they, everybody yeah. said. Like he didn't care after that. No. He, died, he started dying then. Yeah. So yeah, like with my mom, it took her a long time to uh, for her to allow us to see him, but he did get uh, off the drugs and he quit drinking before he died. Before he was diagnosed with any of these ailment so but when i was 15 i met him for the first time and then yeah. i was introduced then my half brother reached out to us he didn't know that we existed this is angel and my dad's son yeah. and then he came up uh, to canada and came and met my brother and i and my mom and then I ended up, I was a, I was a bad kid I, and my mom wanted to ground me for the summer for the entire summer which couldn't keep track of me so my brother took me for yeah. the summer in Vermont. So that's how we ended up, you know, starting a really good dialogue of like, okay, so what do you know? What do I know? Like on opposite sides 
of the board or you know, just different people that we'd met uh, independently. Yeah. And we to this day, we're all comparing stories about like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, okay, so you know this and I know this part of the story. So that figures that yeah. out, you know? So it's, it's come from a lot of different, I, I, I tried to get, in, I did get in touch with Tom O'Neill, but because my story, like what my, what I know, there's not actually like a solid paper trail. I, I understand why he was hesitant to carry on conversation. You know, he's very obviously yeah. a very busy man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have what he needed to make it official. Yeah. I get, you know, so. And I, yeah. you know, and I have Miles number. I was known as last thing, you know, I've tried been trying to reach him, but it's an automated machine. You have reached yeah. that, 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 and you can feel. I say, I think I sent you a photo where I just blocked out. But that yeah. doesn't really mean much. But I was like, I have it right here. Like, if you can look, we're seeing on the internet. Nobody can find a picture of this guy. Nobody can yeah, <laughs> get in touch with him. And I'm sitting here with all of this information. I'd, I'd interview him if he wants to be interviewed, but I get the feeling he's going to have to pay to interview him, and I can't pay no. him. So I, I, I think in the in the message, the voicemail that I left the first time, it probably put him off. You know, like I just read in with uh, I'm Bill Littler's daughter, and I would really like to, you know, know about. What my dad, you know, it was, I should have just left a generic message yeah. in retrospect. <laughs> so, oh well. But I'll keep adding it. I mean, like I said, like, there's a few more um, living people that were around during those days that I'm trying to find their phone numbers, find contact information, but it's not easy. Yeah. Well, that's why I was trying really trying to get, you know, Tom put 20 years of work into this. Like if I could have built some sort of a rapport with him, yeah. you know, maybe he could have helped me out on how to find out more. But like I said to you, I found that um how to find out if your loved ones uh passed or present like passed away or living were involved with um certain experiments that I think that Manson was involved in, stuff like that. So, yeah. So that might be able to give me a little bit more uh, confirmation, but any sort of military time, records yeah. might be interesting as well. But it sounds but like he wasn't was that, military. Yeah, he had military training, but he was not officially. Yeah, no, he was, he was, he was an army brat. He was in the military for a very short amount of time. So he was a girl, He was in the army base when he was a kid, um, and he I actually have an older sibling. A, uh, that my dad had apparently when he was 16 or 17, probably. I don't, his name is Wolfgang Littler. So, it, you know, and that was in Germany. Yeah. So, it's there's a German, uh, yeah, he was over there at some point for military. Yeah. Uh, and right. you see where I mean, like, her kind of, before I was able to pull it all together, it just sounded outrageous. You know, until I started to find this common thread. So again, yeah. thank you for you know keeping this content going. Um, yeah, we well, might be find a military record for him. Yeah, uh, but I mean, military record probably would exist. Just because yeah. I don't know, I'm just concerned yeah. about like anything after that because he was wiped. He was uh, off the grid. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Yeah, we found something. Big. Danny oh, yeah. DiCarlo as well. He was witness in the Manson trial and that, and so that, but. Yeah, like you say, if he if he was involved in dodgy black ops stuff, they might have just wiped a record of him, and there just isn't anything. Exactly. To find. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a it's a what do they call it? Catch twenty two. Like you can find him from his death records, but he doesn't have yeah. any. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. He existed. He was like mm-hmm. a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Witson to be the same. It's weird. Reeve Whitson. There's no record of him ever having earned any money in his entire life. Mm. He was like, how weren't he? How was he living? <laughs> if he didn't uh, earn any money ever, you know, I mean, there's something mm-hmm. quite about his records, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I asked mom about or my mom about Billy and the way that he spent, like, how what did he really have money? Like, because I just didn't. The Rochdale people were all like hippies and stuff. So no, he was very smart. He was an entrepreneur. He, you know, he he 
had the money. <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny when I was googling him. There's like a 15 second clip, and it's at Billy Doyle's house in Hollywood, <laughs> and so we just, you know, panning across the house, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm mean, going to see though, because that might be the one where the house is on YouTube. I think it was. Yeah, it just a yeah Billy Doyle's Hollywood home, and it's yeah. just a pan across. And I showed my mom that. She said, "Yeah, that looks about on par of what." money the billy and what he was doing back then yeah um, yeah, yeah but uh there's sometimes that i can get, get her to you know open up it depends on if i'm coming in hot or not because in her trauma kind of kicks in and she makes but yeah. like last night i was able to show her some of the new rochdale photos that had come up on um alex mcdonald He's a, a blind, a legally blind photographer in Toronto, and he's got a huge archive of Rochdale photos, and that's where I get a lot of this from. I wouldn't be surprised if he's got photos of Doyle too, um, but yeah. he's on the Facebook on the on the Rochdale page. It's got a page. If anybody, I'm gonna get in trouble for this one too. It's at three forty one Bloor Street. Uh, Rochdale yeah. College is the name of the group, and it's just oozing with uh, stuff that uh, can help, help me anyway, because there are people that are interested in the story. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm interested in just telling people stories as well, even if it's not about mm -hmm. true social history, because these people aren't famous. Their names wouldn't go down in history, you know, just because they aren't famous, but their stories are oh. fascinating. And the stuff well, these people. I, I, are yeah, I, I know that my dad did business with um, uh, Rick James, and I asked the photographer, I'm like, how did my dad know Rick James? Because he knew him before he was Rick James. <laughs> it was, you know, he was around before he got famous. And I go, okay, that means yeah. worse. <laughs> no, and he, yeah, uh, uh, well, Billy Doyle got Dave Mason's publishing rights as well, were we? We can't get any answers mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. So there was, like, yeah, some... Yeah, there was the connection in the states that they kind of brought up. Um, I don't know if there's any validity to this. I like to think there is because I think it's kind of hilarious. People that are like not so much with the drugs uh, might not find it funny, but I was told that from Florida connections um, and games and these people that my dad actually was taught and brought the formula to Canada on how to turn coke into free base crack right yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like i know that he brought mda yeah. to the world yeah. i distributed you know it wasn't him yeah. that made it. it was the wizard the scientist the chemist guy yeah, yeah. Uh, but my dad was just a distributor and my mom had told me years ago the best drugs she'd ever done the best trip she ever had was my dad's mda yeah. So, <laughs> so there was no yeah. bad dope going around. Like we were talking, like, the the whole like it was bad dope, and them you know going after Doyle for that not possible. No, yeah, that's what everyone it wasn't else possible. Said, yeah. It was bad dope. It was a chemical, pure chemical compound, yeah. and you know there was no cutting of things. It was right from the laboratory. And just to make this clear for people who don't know, the, the MDA was what Fikowski was selling, and this is in the police report. This is actually, you know, not... not oh, no, I know it's in system. Whittle K was telling the police that uh, Fikowski had gone to pick up a Canadian man from the from the airport to bring in yeah. the MDA and that, yeah, and this is probably... That's, see, that's when I, had that. I wish there was more around that sentence, yeah. you know, more context yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah, the um, so was the system as well. Yeah. Yeah, we did the autopsy there. So, and I, I know that my dad, like, had. Um, no, Abigail Coulter and, and um, Frakowski had it in their systems when mm -hmm. they died. Yeah, that yeah. Actually, it was. Yeah. Oh. And so I think I know that Frakowski and Coulter had taken MDA the day they mm -hmm. were murdered. Also, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like everybody, it's, it's well obviously no knowledge that like Billy Doyle's only known as an international drug dealer. That's what he did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, my dad, I knew that before any of this stuff came up as well um, that he was getting his acid LSD supply from Tim Leary, and my dad yeah. was sending him the MDA and and 
uh, crystal methamphetamine and cocaine. I know it was well, the cash oil cash was cash selling cash. at yeah. the ranch or at um, Cielo Drive. You know? Yeah. yeah. So well, well, all, and, and I know that my dad was in Jamaica doing the pot, growing the yeah. pot at the same time that uh, Doyle and Harrigan went over there. Yeah, that's Tackle. Tackle and Doyle. Uh, yeah. And then that's the photographer, the when I talked to him about it, he said, oh, that's the first time I've heard him, heard that Uncle Charlie referred to as that. I got yeah. very familiar, the familiarity was there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another thing, the internal rumour about the Doyle incident as well, I was quite surprised. Mm. Oh, apparently you guys were told maybe you can go ahead <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say it, I'll only say it once because this is really gross, but the, the, the Doyle incident, they were told internally that it was done by dogs it was Great Danes Great not, Dane. not Bukowski, it was Great Danes that they set on Doyle to assault him basically <laughs> won't repeat it again, but yeah that was the internal rumour, <laughs> because the, the yeah. tale has yeah. been told is that Bukowski did it, but, but yeah. Doyle was unconscious to, yeah, Doyle had been drugged on content, but they set dogs on him. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, like that. but like when I was told the story, it was about, uh, I forget who it was, Hopper or, or Mickey Rourke was the one that videotaped it. And this is before any of, you know, this podcast yeah. business was going on. Like, this is what the story that was told. Yeah. Well, Hopper before. spoke about it in an interview, didn't he? But none of yeah. us can find yeah. the interview. Apparently, yeah. Hopper spoke. They don't name yeah. Billy Doyle as well. They just say a drug dealer. A drug dealer mm. is organized in the garden or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like I've, I've spent so many hours saving pages, screenshotting, saving pages, screen, and it's all pretty much, it's all consistent. But like there's people that, you know, say a little bit like the house boy. Yeah, it's in Cass Elliot's biography as well about it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter Tork even had something to say about the that's fact what that... That's who it was, not me, not me, me. yeah, Peter Tork, that's who it was. Sorry, yeah, I knew it was one of the monkeys. monkeys. I can believe it, even he had something to say about it. So everyone the in Hollywood... Was <laughs> I always thought he was wholesome. Yeah, that's it, what was that he doing? Was. It? Like, bloody hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, yeah. come on, queen. She's a... Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 well, dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I couldn't believe it. it was it the, the book, the uh, the one about Laurel Canyon and other odd things in the 1960s? Oh, things inside the canyon, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that talks about how all of the Canadian guys just, you know ended up going there and it, and the, that there was not actually any music there wasn't any scene to be going there for they created yeah. it yeah, you know? created yeah. It. Yeah. Like, like, that had gone through Rochdale to buy people are mm -hmm. Canadian like Neil Young is actually Canadian wow. um yeah because I mean, yeah. there's so many but it's there surprising so many, yeah. people think they're American are actually Canadian mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they even in recent days, even, like recent days, even people are like, Ryan uh, Reynolds is Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 Ryan Reynolds is Canadian. Uh, well, Ryan Gosling is Canadian. We had our own, yeah. I say we had our own private Ryan thing going on where the rest of the world was doing their Chris experiments. <laughs> Chris Pine and <laughs> things like all the hot Chris's up oh, here. We were yeah, creating yeah. Ryan. Well, well, no, you're Canadian, blocking your mic there. Sorry, you were just blocking yeah, no, your there mic there. Corey, no, there isn't a mic on my chest now. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, um, no, Corey Haim was Canadian mm -hmm. as well. Corey Haim was Canadian. There was the one from Glee that passed away about probably about a decade ago, and it was all over my social media, and I'm such an asshole. And I, said, I went to my best friend, and I said, who the Fuck cares about Corey, Corey Montag. Like, I'm so sick about hearing it. Like, actually, Reagan and I heard about him. I knew him from the program, and he was a really nice guy. Like, <laughs> like yeah. Ray, sorry, wrong, wrong audience. <laughs> but yeah, we've, you know, yeah, people, uh, Mike Myers, Jim Carrey, you know, all of the fucking, all the best yeah, from well, yeah. the yeah. Yeah. I, you know, Dan Aykroyd, Eugene Levy, like, the list goes on and on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, was there anything else you wanted to say? So we better wrap this up. I think my internet connection's playing up. Um, so, no, just if anybody wants to reach out to, to, to me through uh, Nancy's page, and I'm going to be, you know, I'm always, we're in, I'm probably, I'm, I'm, I'm around. Um, yeah, so if there's yeah. anything that can help me, or just, uh, um, yeah. I'm definitely really going to listen to Rochdale College more now, and because that really? sounds like it I'm definitely going to look into Rochdale College more now because yeah, that sounds yeah. like it was affiliated yeah. with the same university, Timothy oh, Leary. Right. Yeah, it, uh, it links everything. Yeah. It, it is the, it's the hub. It's the heart of it, you know. And Kath Elliott was linked Where to all the drugs came. Leary. He went to right. Timothy Leary's house a bit, apparently. Mom, yeah. And yeah, so they all knew each other. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna continue to do what I can on my end. You know, Nancy, I'm gonna keep you uh, informed yeah. if any rocks I unturn and hopefully other people will yeah. give me the same courtesy. But if so, anyone knows anything else, wanna share it. Yeah, if I, you know, I you know I'm always on there. Um and I'll I'll continue to do I think I'm yeah. I think I'd sign myself up as anonymous uh originally, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to change that. No, that was just that one post you did. Don't worry. Yeah, just you posted the photo as an anonymous uh -huh. member initially, didn't you? Yeah. But when you just post normally, yeah, uh, then it. it comes up. But yeah, I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm, try I'm trying. But now that I've, I have this information, like how to find out about uh, loved ones and past, and it's just, I think it's, I'm starting to get things are starting to uncover more, um, yeah. just as paintings uh, or realizing like you know like all these when I mean, all these papers leaked um, yeah thing this is just in 2022 that canada was admittedly part of yeah. a lot of this stuff going on so crap and so, it's the only reason uh, anyone isn't talking is because they're scared the police will come for them this case is closed they're not interested in opening the case yeah. again no matter what you say Unless you come forward with like real heavy evidence, like oh, it was being filmed, we've got the film of it, or we've got mm -hmm. a murder weapon or something. There is a video. Not... I was so told there have... there is a video. I'm sure it wasn't destroyed. I'm sure it's out yeah. there somewhere. Of the, of the Doyle incident, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. See, I've heard that as well that it was filmed, and that might be it why was. he was. No, it was. Off. It was one of it was yeah. the Peter Tork that filmed it, or Hopper, like I was saying. I can't remember yeah. which one of them it was. Yeah, someone. It was. Yeah, I think it was Tork. But yeah, there's a uh, people have always always debated whether they might have filmed Cielo Drive the murders as well though. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. I can I doubt that to be quite yeah. honest. But yeah, but, but yeah, uh, the point was to... unless you've got really heavy evidence, there's no way this case is going to be reopened. So if you just want to tell us your memories, they're not yeah. going to come. To you. They're not going to come and bust you and arrest you and uh, you know investigate unless there's hard evidence. And most people, it, that's just not going to exist anymore, is it? I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. no one's going to accept it all these years. Yeah, no, yeah. and like, yeah. even with that, uh, you know, they they wouldn't say past or like like when we took that and for trying to understand the timeline. Like my dad was born in the nineteen thirties. Yeah, <laughs> he was part yeah, of the yeah. cold part of that. You know, it's um, yeah. bizarre yeah. to think that. Manson and that sort of that, that those that generation, isn't he? He's the same generation as Charles Manson in that. Mm -hmm. And all them That's army brats from Laurel yeah. Canyon. Yeah. But yeah. yeah anyway. <laughs> All right, Nancy. Thank, thank you so much for giving me this space to to tell your viewers and get my story out there as to what yeah. I know in regards to this. And hopefully, it was entertaining and not too manic. <laughs> I hope you know anyone who's got any other information will contact us if they want to. <laughs> If you've got nothing to lose, they're not going to come and bust you unless you've got another no. hard confidence. Yeah, and like my dad passed, passed away in 2004. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he did what he was told. <laughs> he followed yeah. the rules. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I'll stop the recording now, anyway. So, yeah. Thanks, Thanks Nancy. Thanks for watching, everyone. Okay, and, we'll talk uh, again soon. Yes. Goodbye. Bye.